plan. Okay. Can't hear me yet. Hello, Andrew. There's Brittany. Jesse has entered the waiting room. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Brittany. How are you? Doing good. Back in Wichita. Well, oh yeah, good. That's what you that, that's what you said you were doing. So I thought you probably made it. Yep, yep. So now I'm on my two weeks of uh, quarantine. Now is that from the time you left New York or from the time you got into Wichita? I think I'm not sure. You left, I think it's the time you <laughs> left New York, or you're not going to be home long enough to get baptized on the right nights. So we're going to call it the, the night you left New York. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. I will testify for you. Brittany, left. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Eric is here. Andrew's here. Jesse's here. Everybody. Did you get my brother's email? Yes, yes. we did. We did. Okay, good. Everybody has five seconds to get on. <laughs> Give everybody a minute or two more. You know, we're going to do this all perfectly next week when it's the last one. We will, we will have made it perfect at that time. You mean the attendance or <laughs> just uh, the timing? No, mm. uh, the, all the, the tech. Our tech, broadcast. The technology stuff is like. Hang on, somebody trying to get to us here. I think we're okay. Yeah. My internet connection is unstable. No, it's yeah. not. It's <laughs> perfectly fine. Yeah, that's that's a bunch of baloney. Yeah. It's baloney, okay. It's strong signal. <laughs> because my teachers back during the semester always kept getting at, but we had no issues. Yeah. Yeah, so. All right, our grandsons were here today and our internet connection was strong enough for them to play video games for seven straight hours <laughs> so I, well, they, they might have used it up I don't know <laughs> I don't know what, what video games does to uh, the internet connection um, they, they were using it <laughs> just depends on how many routers you got Well, they figured out the closer they get, the stronger the signal. <laughs> Andrew, Hippisley is here. And two more oh, people are waiting goodness. in the waiting room. Hello, Andrew, both Andrews. <laughs> and Amy's here. Hi, Hello, Amy. Amy. There we go. I haven't seen you for months. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, let's see here. I'll start now and get going. Let's get moving. Yes. Okay. Okie Well, maybe not. <laughs> the difficulty. So there we go. go. Jesus is the light of the world. Light. The light no darkness can extinguish. Let's start in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, name. thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be, will be done, on earth, on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily, daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us, our us our of our trespasses, trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us lead not us into not temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. from evil. Amen. Amen. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's our family prayer. And we're, we're getting all getting ready to join the family officially here. So we need to hear to say that family prayer. I'm first, honey. Okay. 
Go. Okay. Um, wanted to m mention that the final decision has been made as to when everything will take place. Uh, your uh, people who are to be baptized, which is Andrew the Younger and Eric and Brittany will be baptized on Saturday, May the 30th at the five o'clock mass, okay? Those who are going to be confirmed only, and that would include Jared and Jesse and Maritza and Leticia, Letty and also Brenda, they will also be confirmed at the five o'clock mass on Saturday, May the 30th. It's a five o'clock mass and father requests that everybody be there at 4.30 because we wanna go over what's going to happen and so you kind of know, know what's, what's going on. Your family is invited to come and especially if you are there at 4.30 uh, with all of the spacing as it's being done in the cathedral, there will almost certainly be room for everybody to be sitting near the front spaced out the way they want it to be these days. You need to make sure your sponsor is there, okay? Some sponsors have been, and there's David. Hey! <laughs> and uh, some sponsors haven't kept up with us too much throughout the, this process, but got to bring your sponsor because you got to have somebody there for you. Okay, and now, now, those who are making a profession of faith, which includes Andrew Hippesley and Amanda Perez and Jeremiah Taylor and, oh, shoot, there's a couple more. <laughs> Anybody who wasn't included on Saturday comes on Sunday morning, 10 o'clock mass. Um, and you will, uh, Father's asking you to be there at 9.30 out in the gathering space for a little bit of instruction. Um, you'll be making a profession of faith and be confirmed at, and receive your first Eucharist at that Mass. So, is everybody clear on when they're supposed to be there? We will send out a written uh, yeah. document yeah. that will help you remember. I'll email everybody. <laughs> Can I just ask, at this point, is, from what I understand, we're supposed to be there at 4.30 on Saturday, May 30th, and it, those who need to be baptized, everything will be done? Yes. Yes, if you are... Okay. Those who would be baptized will be baptized, confirmed, and receive Eucharist mm -hmm. at that Mass. Okay? All right. Okay. All sponsors and godparents must be there. Or I'm going to have to fill in for everybody, and it's going to be... Tough me running across everybody, and you know, so everybody, everybody show up, okay? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Today we're going to uh, share our patron saints. I'm going to be writing them down, and they, the uh, the the saints' names will go to the office uh, to be on the certificates of confirmation that you all will receive. And I'll let Chris um, just first of all. You know, why, why do we need a patron saint? I guess we don't need one particularly, but they're, 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 they're really nice to have. Uh, I, I chose my patron saint for kind of silly reasons 18 years ago. Um, and I have since gotten, gotten very attached to other saints as well. So I have like a whole, you know, I, uh, I got a bunch of folks praying for me up there. So... Remember that everyone who makes it to heaven as a saint has been totally purified. They're close to God. They will, they will intercede for us only for our own good and only in the will of God. So they're very, very useful intercessors. And it's part of everybody participating in the life of God. And so that's, and it's very nice to have someone that you feel connected with. We'll let everybody give a, a little, just a, a tiny life sketch of their saint and especially tell us what makes you feel connected. And I'm going to go get a pen while Chris
Chris starts. Okay, with. I have three printouts from submissions. Marsha Marshall. She said she has chosen Saint Joan of Arc as her patron saint, and she said everyone probably knows the story, the story of Saint Joan of Arc. She said she relates to her because she was born to a poor family like herself, and she said she almost certainly had epilepsy, which Marcia also suffers from. I didn't know that. Marcia shares prayers that she said that she has said all her life, prayers that St. Joan also said frequently, and the prayer is, Lord, lead me, Lord, guide me. Although Marcia said she's not gonna lead soldiers into battle, she's tried to bring peace to conflicts in her life. So, and at the end of that, we will say, I will say the saint's name and everyone can respond or mouth, uh, pray for us. So St. Joan of Arc, pray, pray for, for us. us. Pray for us. Pray for us. Okay, and who sent this in? Um, Jesse's here online, so he can give us oh, okay. his own talk. Well, I think I might have went, I don't know if, uh, if I should just be last. Okay, uh, we're, you're cutting out, Jesse, so if we get to you and you are still cutting out, I'll go ahead and read it then. What? You are cutting out. Your audio is cutting out. And here's this. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. That's Jesse. Okay. Jesse, he's here. This is Jared. Okay. I have Jared's then. Uh, uh, yeah. Here's Jared's. And we'll, they will get to Jesse later. Jared says he has chosen, or he was chosen by, Pope St. John the Paul II. He said that uh, he was born in, uh, born Carol Joseph Wojtyla in Wodice, Wodice, Poland, somewhere around. The pronunciation, I'm not sure. To, 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 devout, to devout Catholic parents. And when he was 18, and that was in 1938, he enrolled in Krakow University to study philosophy and acting. By then, though, he had already lost his mother and both of his siblings. And those losses really affected him greatly and drove him further into his faith. And of course, we understand that in 1939, the Nazis invaded Poland, and they attempted to destroy every aspect of the Catholic culture there. Uh, it forced the young Wojtyla to practice and celebrate mass in secret away from the Nazis, which was extremely dangerous. Many priests ended up in uh, the uh, internment camps in the death camps because of that. And also during World War II, he lost his father. So he was almost alone. By, he quickly rose through the Catholic hierarchy and in 1978, he was elected Pope at the age of 58 which is really kind of young. And he's the, he was the first non-Italian Pope in, since the 16th century. And his reign would last 27 years. You know, upon his death, it was interesting because there were so many people, young people, who had only known one Pope their entire life. Um, he was an outspoken, yeah, he was an outspoken <laughs> critic of communism. Yeah, <laughs> he defended the faith uh, with great knowledge and intelligence. And he said that's the reason he has po chosen John Paul II. Uh, he died in 2005 at 85 and drew a crowd of well over a million people to his funeral. Um, and I f he was canonized in 2014. Part about why, why he, chose it. Oh, he said he chose it because... Was it yesterday or Monday? His birthday was yesterday or Monday? One of those days. Yeah, I forgot. Like very happy, recently. Happy birthday. <laughs> he, he said he chose John Paul II <laughs> because he's a staunch defender of the faith <laughs> from the dangers of the modern world, but to do it compassionately, compassionately is exactly what we need to do now. It's what we need right now. Somebody's trying to get in Amen. here. Amen. We can get Susan in here. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can't agree more, brother. Yeah. To do the luminous mysteries, right? 
Yes. Yep. Yes, he started he, yeah. those. Yeah. He confused me. I get a woman. <laughs> Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And right, next, oh, we'll we'll go around the we have uh, to say Saint Gabriel. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Pope Saint John Paul II. <laughs> pray, pray for us. us. Pray for us. Okay. Brittany. And yes, Brittany, go ahead. You're at the top on my screen, you're mm -hmm. number one. So go ahead. And I'm gonna mute everyone okay, else. Okay, so for um, yeah, for my patron saint, I've chosen uh Saint Gianna Beretta Mola. Okay. Um, she was born um, on October 4th, 1922 in Magenta, um, which is in Italy. Um, she was one of 13 children. Um, she became a doctor. She earned degrees in medicine and surgery, um, but she eventually specialized in pediatrics, um, and she opened a small clinic in um, a the town of Macero, where she met her husband, Pietro. Um, she had, let me get this right, three children, um, but in her fourth pregnancy, um, doctors discovered that she had a tumor in her uterus. Um, and so the doctors gave her the choice to either um, abort the child or get a hysterectomy, which would end the life of her unborn child, or um, just try to remove the tumor um, to an attempt to save the child, um, which ended up eventually being at the expense of her own life. Um, she was able to see her child be born, um, but then a week later she died of infection. Um, her child um, was named, let's see, Gianna Emanuela, and she ended up also going on to becoming a doctor. Um, so um, she was beatified by Pope John Paul II on April 24th, 1994, and she was canonized as saint on May 16th, 2004. Um, so yes, uh, Pope John Paul described her as a simple but more than ever significant messenger of divine love. And she inspired the first pro-life Catholic healthcare center in New York called the Gianna Center. Huh. So that is um, St. Gianna Beretta. So St. Gianna Beretta, mm -hmm. pray for us. Pray for us. All right, good. Is the, uh, uh, is, is the signal better now? Yes, it is. Yes, yeah, very good. I, I think I can share it now. Go ahead. Okay, Jesse. Okay, so. After much debating, I decided to chose St. Andrew. Andrew was the apostle of one of Christ's apostles, brother of Simon Peter and a son of John. They were once fishermen from Galilee uh, during the Roman Empire occupation. Uh, Jesus Christ found Andrew and his brother and told them that they would be the fishers of men. Um, Andrew, after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension, continued to spread Christ's teaching throughout Greece, Albania, Macedonia, Bulgaria, Serbia, Slavica, and Ukraine, and many other areas north of Greece, uh, and spread the Gospels and have been a major influence on those areas. Um, he was martyred in 60 CE by the Roman Empire by crucifixion. However, his cross was not in the shape of a T, but rather an X. Um, one legend goes that many years after Andrew's death, an angel came to St. Uh, Regulus or St. Rule in Patras and was told to spread Andrew's bones from Constantinople to the ends of the earth. Uh, St. Rule traveled with some of the relics and was reportedly shipwrecked off of a small settlement of East Scotland. Uh, some of Andrew's relics were placed in a chapel on that area and was, that was built in the 11th century. Not far from it was uh, St. Rule's Tower itself, which still stands and was a hot spot for uh, pilgrimage just to see Andrews' relics. But during the Scottish Reformation, his relics got destroyed. However, in 1969, St. Pope Paul VI shipped some of Andrews' relics to Scotland and has been in Edinburgh ever since. The reason why I chose Andrew is because of my Scottish heritage and ancestry. I have pride in my people and pride in my ancestors' homeland. Even in my last name, Anderson means son of Andrew. Okay. Many people outside of Scotland think the country means uh, bar fights, drinking kills, haggis, and Braveheart. But when I think of Scotland, I think of my clan and the saint that is part of Scottish identity today. Also, he was a patron saint of fish, and I like fishing. <laughs> there you go. So, St. Andrew. Pray for, for us. us. Very good. All right. We're going to 
What's that? We're going to go to Gordon. Eric. I'm sorry, Eric. All we Eric? see on the line is Gordon. All we see is Gordon. Eric Gordon. Uh, there we go. Are you in? Is my sound coming through all right? Or Beautifully. Oh, okay. um, the saint I chose would be Saint Fiacra. He was an Irish saint uh, born around 600. And he uh, became a priest and eventually a um, an abbot there. And um, he decided that uh, things were a little bit too loud and too busy. So he left for France and uh, he actually got some land there, a small amount of land <clears throat> in a woodland and set up a hostel and received visitors. Um, eventually the same thing happened again and people came to see him and, you know, he ended up forming a, a monastery and, uh, but his life mostly consisted of prayer, um, receiving visitors, um, manual labor in, you know, agriculture mm -hmm. for himself and the people around him, um, uh, you know, kind of like Benedict would later, you know, mm -hmm. do or at labora, you know, uh, so that, that speaks to me a lot. I appreciate that. He's the patron saint of gardeners. Um, that, that was one of the reasons, uh, his, his feast days on my birthday also. So that I just, uh, I thought that worked out, but he, uh, you know, was supposedly, uh, he healed by laying on of hands and, uh, later his relics were scattered around France and Italy. Um, so a lot of them are still, you know, around today, a lot of, uh, oratories and, and, uh, chapels were named after him in France and, uh, yeah, that's, that's and my saying. <laughs> give us his name again. Fiacra. That's uh, Gaelic, F-I-A-C-R-E. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. So St. Fiacra. 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 Pray for us. Pray for us. Pray for Very us. good. Thank you, Eric. And let's go over to Andrew. Well, oops. One of the, one of the, oh. Go ahead. I, yeah, my saint is one of the newest saints. Uh, he was made a saint in October, and he is Saint John Henry, uh, John Henry Newman. Okay. Uh -huh. um, he was born in 1801. He was a staunch Anglican, like I used to be. Uh, well, still am, I suppose, technically, until May the 31st. <laughs> he um, is one of probably the most famous converts to Catholicism from the Protestant faith. Uh, he was um, made a priest in a, he was an Anglican priest. He converted based, based on the belief that um, the tradition and the deposit of faith are extremely important and they were being discontinued uh, in the Church of England. Um, so he was a real believer in that tradition carrying on. And then he uh, ended up being made a priest and then a cardinal. And he had the most beautiful writings. And he was one of the most beautiful and eloquent defenders of, of the Catholic faith. And later he got into higher education and he had a big treatise on Catholicism and its connection to higher education. And he founded the Catholic University of Ireland, which parallels the American University, uh, the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. It's like the antecedent to that. And... Um, so yeah, I, I feel that uh, both, both as an Anglican who became a Catholic and someone who's into higher ed in a big way, uh, I can relate to him. And of course, I hope he relates to me if I pray hard yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. John Henry Newman. Is it, is it St. John Henry Newman? Yes. We don't use Cardinal anymore. So St. John Henry Newman, pray, pray for, for us. us. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Maritza, are you with us? Oops, hang on here. I've actually chosen 
um, the Virgin Mary. Okay, yes. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because <laughs> um, I know that, I mean, everybody really knows who the Virgin Mary is. Um, I guess I'll give my reasoning on why I chose her. Mm -hmm. Uh, the main reason why I chose her is because she teaches us to be humble. Mm -hmm. um, one of the main things that is said about her is that the Virgin Mary is nothing, um, but really she's everything. Mm -hmm. So she teaches us that even, I mean, no matter what we have in life, we always have to be humble. And I mean, we're nothing without God. Beautiful. So um, that's, that's all I have. Okay, that's all right. So Mother Blessed Virgin Mary, pray, pray for, for us. us. All righty. And then who can? Andrew. Okay. Andrew Wilkinson. Andrew, did you want to share your saying? Can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Um. For my patron saint, I chose Saint Cyprian of Anak ah. for because we have similar past uh, dealing with the occult and witchcraft and his conversion to it uh -huh. after his encounter with Saint with Saint Justina. Uh -huh. So that's interesting. That's how about all. I don't exactly have an essay for it, but okay. And. Saint Cyprian of um, Saint Cyprian of Anak. Okay. Of Anak. Can you spell that last word? Uh, A N T I O C H. Antioch. Yes. Oh, and I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we got it. So Saint Cyprian of Antioch. Pray for, for us. us. Thank you, Andrew. Now we have uh, Letitia. We go down to Letitia. Letty? How are you, Letty? <laughs> Oops. Oh, my God. How about you guys? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh-huh. Sorry, I lost connection, and I had to connect to my phone. Um, so I chose St. Martin de Porres. Ah. Um, he was canonized by John Paul Pope John the 23rd. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Mm -hmm. um, his feast day is November 3rd. And he's the patron of mixed race, barbers, public health workers, and innkeepers. Mm -hmm. Just a little insight of his story. Um, he was the illegitimate son of a Spanish gentleman and um, a freed slave from Panama. He was born in Lima, Peru. So at the time, um, being an illegitimate son was not good at all. So he was called horrible names and mocked very badly. In fact, um, he couldn't go into the church because it, it was required by law for you to be a legitimate um, son or daughter. Wow. So he entered the church by volunteering. And he kind of just worked his way up he's uh, way up like that and um he was just helped a lot of people um he walked them welcome a lot of people to his house unconditional of their race um and everything like that um why I, the reason why i chose him is i always knew of him because my mom's name is martina mm -hmm. and uh but i really never looked into him till recently that i've been in class I kind of just looked into him and I, I just fell in love. Um, so my mom's birthday is on November 5th. And uh, he was, she was the first child out of, out of nine kids. So when she was born, uh, my grandma tells us that since it's so close to St. Martin's Day, the birth and it was back then, you didn't have any like hospitals or sanitary things going on. She basically gave birth to my mom in, in her house. So she prayed and if my mom came out okay, she was going to name her Martina. So <laughs> it kind of just started from there. My 
uh, interest in St. Martin and I ended up searching him up and reading more about him and I, I just fell in love. Wonderful. My mother really loved St. Martin de Porres. We had a about a four foot statue of St. Martin de Porres that uh, we gave to the church. So yeah, he's always been an interesting part of my life. We have uh, oh, 10, what? go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, okay, yeah. St. Martin, pray, pray for, for us. us. We have 10 minutes left in our time slot here. I think everybody who's on has, has shared, am I right? Yeah. We have Susan and Amy and David as sponsors on. Maybe we have 10 minutes. If you have a special saint or a patron, maybe perhaps you could just share who that saint is, just so, you know, just so we know. <laughs> um, how about you, Susan? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you. Yes. Well, I've been reading about the Divine Mercy and St. Faustina. So I think she's a very sweet person to mm -hmm. read about and study with. And so that's one I could add for the, for the budge. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. St. Faustina? Yes. yes. For us. Okay. How about Amy? Oh, Amy, who's your favorite saint? Who's your patron? Um, <clears throat> well, my patron saint is St. Lucy, and that was, I mainly chose her because I spent about 15 to 18 years in the um, optical <clears throat> industry, optometric industry, and she is like the patron saint of eyes. Um, but now, since I've learned about St. Maximilian Colby, he's positively <laughs> my favorite, saint, and I just love him, love him, and everybody I've heard today, I just, I it's pretty amazing. I'm really interested in Eric Gordon's patron saint. I want to look him up because I love, love, love learning about saints. And David? When I was in fifth grade at St. Margaret Mary Grade School, we had to pick a patron saint, and it was St. Joseph for me. I had no idea why. I think it was because my older brother told me he'd beat me up or something if I didn't take his middle name. <laughs> <laughs> I, now... St. Teresa of Lisieux, oh my land, from France, all of her sisters were Carmelite nuns. Mm -hmm. I, if I could do it all over again, uh, you know, I, I can't change fifth grade, but I, I pray with St. Teresa of Lisieux yep. all the time, and St. Benedict since I had my act. Um, but yeah, those two are go-tos, and if it, anybody wants to read a, a good book, you can pick any chapter you want in this one. Mm -hmm. It's Bay of Trust and Love by Jacques Philip. And he was here not long ago. Now, if we had done this at our Holy Saturday retreat, I would have given you all a beautiful white candle we would have them sitting in the in the circle and we would you know it'd be like a campfire and it would be really cool i can't give you a candle <laughs> through the through the zoom process perhaps those will come on the days <clears throat> that you are confirmed and are baptized yes that's right does anybody have a lighter we can all just mm -hmm. wave, <laughs> wave sing together there we go <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. Brittany's out of the game <laughs> so uh uh, it's, it's always it's always so heartening to me to hear all these stories. I, I, I know that we we talk too much during our classes, Chris and I, me especially. We we talk at you, and I just love the Holy Saturday Day Retreat, which we've been spreading out now over about four weeks. <laughs> um, and I get to hear from you and and hear that there have been spiritual things happening in your in your life and in your minds and hearts while we've been we've been trying to give you the best teaching that we can it, there's been real conversion happening inside of you and that's that's always so heartening and so encouraging for me to hear that and so um 
next week we will have a zoom class but it will be you know um more of a meditative kind of class we're going to you know we're going to talk about baptism confirmation um uh, which everybody will receive and the first eucharist everybody gets that too so we're going to have a, a kind of a meditative class it's it's as important as anything hopefully to get your minds and hearts prepared in, in, a, in a final way for receiving the sacraments just a couple of days after next Wednesday. So try to make it, try to make it here. And um, uh, it has been, it's been a lot of fun this evening. And I, again, I'm so happy that when I get to see faces because that'll be cool on the on the 30th and 31st i'll actually see you people <laughs> it'll be great it'll be great all right any last words give us give us a closing no. prayer um yeah it's been wonderful really to hear all your saints and uh just remember that they have a capital s in front of their name but we too are intended to have a small s in front of our names and that's the reason we're here together and that's the reason we're here trying to to uh, get into the church get get fully into the church with all of you so that we can be together forever for eternity mm -hmm. so let's pray um let's pray a hail, hail mary mm -hmm. it's the month of may in the name of the father son holy spirit amen hail mary full, full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus Holy Mary, Mother of Mary, God, God, pray for us sinners, for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Of our death. Amen. Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All of you have a blessed evening, a blessed Amen. week. Hopefully we'll see some of you at Mass. Uh, we've been going to the 8.30 Sunday morning. You, you, you know, it's kind of thing. We got you spread out all over the church. Uh, you couldn't, you know, if you had the virus, you couldn't hit somebody with it if you tried because they got you so far <laughs> apart. I have a quick question. Um, will yeah. either of the masses, um, or the, will the Saturday, May 30th mass be live streamed, or is it just the Sunday masses? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think it will. Okay. I was just wondering. We should yeah. try to make that happen. I'll see what we can do. Maybe we can. Because if you have your family in New York, maybe watch it. I mean, yeah, I, I was just wondering if it was going to be anyway. It doesn't need to be like anything that's um, like specially requested. I just was curious. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense to do that. We'll, we'll see what we can do. Let me okay, see. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Was there someone else who had a question? David said he was going to ask if Jesse with Wham could do it, but I'll ask the priest too and see if we can live stream it. Right. Okay, let's, let's try yeah. to do that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Good. Two, a couple of the priests can operate the TriCaster, so we'll see what we can do. All righty. God bless you all. Good night. Have a good evening. Bye. Signing off. Bye-bye.